As you know, we're talking vital ingredients this morning and uh, an absolutely fundamental, essential ingredient for all our futures is uh, sustainability. In terms of restaurants, of food, uh, sustainability of lifestyle, of people and of the planet as a whole. So our next presenter is an expert in this area, leading by example alongside her husband uh, Dylan Jones at their flagship restaurant, Bolan in Bangkok, Thailand. Please welcome one and only Bo Songvizava. Sawadika. So good morning, everybody. Um, Bo as introduced from Bangkok, Thailand. And to today, so we're going to talk about salt. And salt is like the topics that I choose uh, to do. Obviously, not to piss off the curators of the team, so not to be difficult or bitchy. But I think salt is one of the things that reflect my thought the most at this moment. That why is salt? If you ever pay attention to your history class, you learn that all the ancient civilizations is happening where salt is happening. If you look at <clears throat> Khmer, Mesopotamian, ancient Egypt, it's settled where salt is available to them. So it's so valuable because salt is not what Apart from being a primary test that people like, it's also a necessity to your body. You can't live without salt. You will die, basically. It makes your body function properly. <clears throat> salt is great. With the saltiness of the salt, <laughs> it makes other ingredients taste better. You sprinkle the salt over the tomatoes, the whole profile, the whole palate change. You sprinkle it on your margarita, it also changes how the spirit tastes as well. So, but it's got more value to just make it yummier, more delicious. It's also turn something ineatable to something more pleasure to eat, like the olive. I don't know if anyone tried the fresh raw olive that haven't been cured by salt yet. It's the same thing. Like, it's so bitter, it's so, un it's so ineatable. But if you cure it, if you put it in the brine for certain times, it's become a delicacy. From Mediterranean to Chinese, people all have olive. Salt also help us preserve things. Without salt, I don't think we're going to come this long as a humankind. No way. But because we discover salt, we know how to use salt. So we can preserve things for less unbalanced seasons. So in the dry seasons, when we kill the cow, when we kill the pig, we have more time to eat it. And why we're doing that is develop another palate, is develop another flavors for the food as well. Look at the hamon that you eat outside. Without salt, hamon would not be about hamon. <laughs> so, like the salt cod, because we are in Macau, obviously, <laughs> with the bakalao, it's make things happen, it's foolish, the culinary arts. <clears throat> salt doesn't come in a grain forms only. It also exists in like vegetables, like uh, the samphires. A lot of different seaweed have salty properties to itself as well. And salt not only has its place in our culinary world, it's also in our day-to-day -day social thing as well. In Japanese culture, sumo have to throw the salt for good luck, yeah? Before the game start. You have the expression in English when you throw the salt over your shoulders to, of course, for good luck. So salt got a properties of like expel the evil or expel the bad things from your, li from your life, basically. Sometimes I throw the salt in my restaurant as well. If I have too demanding customer, <laughs> make sure just like all the evil go away as well. In the wedding, you also pour the salt to unite two people to become one. After you pour the salt, 
into a container, you can't separate them back again. It would be too hard to separate the grain. So salt is like everywhere in our societies apart from the food. Now, I go into the Thai salt. With the Thai salt, I believe that our lovely bean staff will take some salt out for you to the table. I have a um, little gift for you today. It's come in a box like this. And if it's not enough for everybody to take home, you will learn to share. <laughs> At least sharing is needed now at this moment of the world. So in this little cute box, you have four jars of salt. These four jars of salt come from four different sorts um, from Thailand. You've got land salt, you've got sea salt, and I um, organize you two land salt and two sea salt for you to have a taste. <clears throat> so please feel free, open it up, and then open the jar, share to the people next to you, to your next tables, so everybody can try some salt. All the salts taste completely different. I'm talking about the land salt first. The land salts, I have two sources. The first source comes from the northern part of Thailand, so it's red things on the map. And if you see the circle things on the zoom-in map, it's come from Nam, which is the province that has been producing salts for like a thousand years, and they're still producing it from the same well. And then the other land source is come from Bung Gan, which is the northeastern part of Thailand. So with Nan, wise men always say that you should learn other languages <laughs> at, the, at different age. So maybe this time is the best for you to learn Thai. Nan. You see the English one, say land salt, and Nan only got three letters on it. So in Nan, they pump the waters from the ancient well up and then boil it up just like modern salt. <clears throat> Get the crystal, they scoop the crystal of the salt and put it in the basket over the, the big clay pot to boil it. So it's become dry. And then you have Hua Hat. Hua Hat is one, two, three, four, five, five letters. <clears throat> it's from the northeastern part of Thailand. Who I had basically do the same things, but it's come from the river. The river is a fresh water, actually. In a drier season, like in April until September, the water dry out, and then it's, the well will appear again. And they pump the salted water from the well, the, the river itself is fresh water, the, but water in the well is salty water. They pump it up and then boil in the big pan the same way. So the land salt from Thailand, more or less, is the um, boiled salt. And then you have the sea salt. <laughs> With the sea salt, if you're looking at the stickers, you have a shorter one and a longer one. <laughs> the shorter one, we call it pet buri. The longer one is called Bang Pakong. Go back to the map just to put you in like <clears throat> history class. <laughs> On the left hand side where it's sort of bluish is Petburi. And on the purple, reddish, pinkish side is Bang Pakong, which is Cha Cheng Sao. So the west part and the east part of the Thai Gulf. In Thailand, we have so many other places and other regions who do the salt as well, but this is like the more pronounced one. <clears throat> so, with the sea salt, it's dry by the sun, and we have it like that. So it doesn't go through the boiling process as, at all. If you were to taste, so I think some of you tasted already. I saw it from here. Which one is the less Saltiest one. Well, <laughs> it's different. People have different flavor for different things. Just like the why I drink it, I think it's really yummy. Others think, drink it and they think it's shit. Uh, 
So for me, if you test the bang pakong one, on the sticker it says sea salt, bang pakong is a longer letters one, got more letters in that. Bang pakong one is actually <clears throat> the nicest one. It's slightly salty with a sweet tone, natural sweet tone in it. But then if you taste the land salt, the land salt has got really deep saltiness to it. There's such a controversy of what salt should we use in what type of food. The most controversy things in Thailand about between the land salt and the sea salt is para, which is the fermented stingy fish that we use most of the time, freshwater fish, either toasted rice or rice husks, and then salt. The people from the northeastern part of Thailand or Isan, they always tell me that, Bo, if you want to do your own para, you have to use land salt only because it has been boiled. So it's not going to go rotten. It's going to go through the fermentation process properly. And then people from the center plains, upper center plains, they're just like, no, no, no. If you want to do pala, you have to use sea salt only. Otherwise, it will get rotten. So I think it's depend on you. It's depend on you, what you like. It's depend on your fermentation skill. People have different things. Uh, pe people have uh, preference in what they can have their hand into as well. <clears throat> Salt in Thai food, back to the Thai culinary a little bit. Salt in Thai food is so important that when you do a curry paste, when you want to pile anything in a pestle and mortar, you start with salt and chili. And that is like the norms. So without salt, we're not going to be have such a gorgeous Thai food for the world. We also use salt to season other things, to make other seasonings, basically. So in the clay jar that you look at is the para or the fermented fish. Dal there is fish sauce making process. You also have salted crabs. You'll have salted fish. You've got pickled mussel. We also salt our bean as well. Obviously, a, China in, a Chinese inference, we have the beans that been steam, salt, and wrap in teak wood leaf or in a fig leaf to let it ferment nicely. We have the bean dicks that we use a lot in the northern part of Thailand. We also use salt to preserve meat. If you ever travel to Chiang Mai or even to Bangkok because, you know, the logistics there already, you have nam. Nam is the minced pork, salt, sticky rice, and garlic. Left it in Thailand weather for three days, it's ready for you to suffer. So that is like how we preserve our meat as well. In the sausages, in a lot of things we use salt to create different flavors, <clears throat> so, to give the dimensions to our Thai food. In Thai food, you don't use one salty element to season your food. You put salt first, and then you may add your fish sauce. After that, you add your shim paste. And if you want to be a little bit fungier, you add your para or your fermented fish as well. So it's the combinations, how you balance all the different elements of the saltiness onto your, in, in your dish as well. It's never one salt. It's never fish sauce only. It will have different play on different saltiness. If you're looking at the structures of Thai cuisine up there, this one is suggested by a Thai wise man and guru called Mam Ratawong Kukrit Pamot. He's not with us anymore. <clears throat> he say the basic of Thai food start from salt and chili. And after that, you add, when you add salt and chili, you got a basic dipping. After the basic dipping, you add the herbs. You got the basic relish. After you have the relish, you add meat and vegetables. You got basically a salad. After the salad, you add water. You got soup. You add coconut cream. You got curry. Then, without salt, there's no Thai food. And I think without salt, it's not that we don't have Thai food. We don't have any other cuisine either. <laughs> That's why I got the big mmm here. Because 
For the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you some facts, figures on our plastic <laughs> pollution in our oceans and see how I'm going to merge that two together. Let's say 150 million metric tons of plastic is in the ocean already. I can't imagine how much is that. Plus another 8 million metric tons go into the oceans every year. I don't know how much, I can't imagine, I can't picture. The only things I know about it is shit load of plastic out there in our oceans, for sure. <clears throat> in our oceans, 60 to 80 percent of the waste floating there considered to be a plastic. And 91 percent of the plastic doesn't get recycled. It doesn't mean whether it can be recycled or not. It probably can be recycled, but 90% of them doesn't get recycled. <clears throat> what we found when they clean the beach, we found a lot of plastic bottles, we found a lot of plastic bags, we found a lot of disposable cutlery, cups, coffee, food trays. But that is not the only thing. As a consumer, as a chef, we think about that. The fishing net also <clears throat> an important part of this number of the plastic, especially when you do commercial fishing. So being a chef, not only not using single plastic, you also where your food comes from as well. How they fish your fish, basically. How they have it. How do they dispose the fish in it after it's ripped? This becomes another problem with our food. Beyond the single-use plastic, beyond the fishing net, we also have microbeads that we um, clean our face, that we scrub our body. It's microbeads that floating into our oceans. You got tires, you got clothes. Like a lot of plastic get used in a lot of different industries that we don't think of, but it's there. Then, the scientists come up with a new thing. So, greenwashing. It's a biodegradable plastic. It's biodegradable. It just becomes smaller. It's not going to disappear. It just becomes smaller, smaller, and smaller, and smaller. And it's become a microplastic. So, it doesn't go away. I got research to back that up. <clears throat> Someone called mermaid tears. Oh, well, if I were a mermaid, I would have tears as well. And these things, the mermaid tears, the microplastic, the fish eat it. The fish eat it because when you cut the fish open, you can find the microplastic in the fish. Wait a minute. Where is our salt come from again? Sea salt. We evaporate the sea water with microplastic in it. <clears throat> so congratulations. You now being you now been eating the plastic from the salt, from the fish, from the shellfish oyster, from everything. And they prove it because they found traces of plastic in your stew. Now not only we eat plastic, we pull plastic as well. <laughs> that is from our pool. <clears throat> I'm not here to scare you off. I'm not here to tell you about the futuristic <laughs> results of what, how we consume today. We are in this stage that we pull plastic already not only the sea salt, the microplastic also get into the water, fresh water that we use to drink, for drinking as well. This plastic thing is just the tip of the iceberg, because I haven't touched agrochemicals that they use in the conventional farming. How about pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, that they spray so that we have food to eat. And where it go? Into the soil, into the water, 
into the oceans. Okay, salt mining. <clears throat> An alternative, but don't you think mining have a great impact to this world as well? Before I bored you with these scientific facts, I go. I like to. I like you to enjoy a little bit of culinary arts then. Thank you. I count seven dish, I think, in there. And every single dishes from my kitchen got either salt, shrimp paste, fish sauce, dry prawns. Even in my dessert, I got salt in the coconut cream as well. So if you not act today, I don't think we're going to last that long as a human kind. That's all. <laughs>